I started going to night school for drawing and when I got there they told me that you know I I couldn't really draw and I'm not a big believer in talent in the idea of talent I don't really believe in it because I I got where I got through adoring the subject Age 17, I discovered the blues. I loved the blues. And my paintings have always had this very simple structure, like the blues. They never get, my paintings never get fancy. They're like the blues on an arc acoustic guitar, Lead Belly, Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson wrote the first narrative metaphor popular song, All My Love in Vain. And that has, that's the key song that all rock and roll is essentially indebted to because there were two lights on the train I, you know, I went with my baby to the station. There were two lights on the train. The blue light was my baby. And the red light was my mind. And that's a metaphor. And that's what happened in popular music, of course. And then we have, of course, the fabulous Beatles who took it very far. But metaphor is what moved music, popular music from the blues to what we have now, which is poetic. Anyway, um, the blues had a big effect on me. I had a blues club, played all these records. And then I was, I was working in a factory two factories. I was working in a cardboard factory and a printing factory. Real hard work, man. And then my mind kind of woke up. I started getting interested in Jean-Paul Sartre, the idea of the irresolvable three, the idea of existentialism, Arthur Kersler, Darkness at Noon, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, um, Miroslav Holab, Serious Music, Kodai's Cello, Sonata. Fuck. That is fucking brutal. And then I just wanted to make paintings like, like Kodai's Cello, Sonata. Incredible piece of music. And, and then I started to go to night school and I studied philosophy, English literature, logic, history, and I managed to get into art school. I started going to night school for drawing. And when I got there, they told me that, you know, I, I couldn't really draw. And I'm not a big believer in talent, in the idea of talent. I don't really believe in it because I, I got where I got through adoring the subject. Then all my early influences, no, 90% of my early influences are French. My work comes from Impressionism, post-impressionism, Manet, Pizarro, Monet, Cezanne, 
Bangor, Gauguin and Paul Clay, which is still in my work. Um, and you know that Pizarro painted a painting of Penjuest Station in London. And I used to catch the train at Penjuest Station to go to work. And it looks exactly like the painting. And I thought one day I'm going to buy that painting. And of course I didn't realize what that painting was in the history of art and that it's, you know, 50 million or whatever. And, you know, no human being can really buy it. It's in a museum. So this, this is kind of a short, shortened version. It's the shortest version I can give you. I worked in a cardboard factory loading trucks and my sculptures come out of this, and my paintings come out of this. All you've got to do is look at my paintings. You can see, you know, what I'm doing. And um, they're very much about the window and the insert. I went to Morocco when I was at art school. This blew my mind because it is the geometry of rhythm. It's not Mondrian. And I wrote a little poem the other day about London, and I wrote Morocco, Mondrian, Mexico, Manet. I love Manet because Manet used all these gray colors, which is, of course, what I do. And uh, people have on occasion aligned my work with Rothko, but of course my work is significantly more um, aggressive. It's not meditative in the same way. By the time I started visiting Mexico, it was more confirmation than influence because then I start to look for confirmation of what I'm doing and in Mexico there is this very strange collision between the Mayan Olmec, Tolmec, Aztec, Inca, well Inca is a bit different, culture and contemporary life and peasant life. And these forces are colliding and uh, they cause a kind of craziness which is interesting to me, it fascinates me. Mexico is a country that I, I like because on the one hand it's, it's very brutal and on the other hand it's very refined. And this is also something you might say about me. There is a brutality about me. And there is also great sophistication in me, philosophically, intellectually, and so on. You know, and I am very uh, uh, philosophically uh, inclined. And um, at the same time, there's something in my work that's animal. And this you find in Mexico very strongly. You know, great, for example, great Mexican boxers, fantastic boxers, but they don't give a shit about defense. They, they, it's mano a mano. And also, then you have all these beautiful temples. And I, I traveled through Mexico and I did watercolors, and some of my most beautiful watercolors are made in Mexico. How did I recover from Paul? Well, the simple, the simple answer to that is, 
you don't. And you can't. Once you understand that, you can handle it. You, if you lose your kid, you are, in a certain way, permanently damaged. There's no, there's no way out of this. And you have to then find a way to continue. There's no question in 1983 the color in my work darkened significantly. Dark grays, black and white, very, very dark paintings. And now they have lightened. And the color in even the darker ones is not the color of um, rage. It's not the color of the wasteland, for example, like T.S. Eliot. I mean, my painting Durango, which is hanging in uh, K20, is like the wasteland. I mean, it's almost inhuman. And that's not what I am. It's not what I, I want to uh, give to the world because I want to give something that's positive.